I'll try it again. So here we go. So who's on Twitter? Okay. Well, I am at Tim Rylands on Twitter, and the hashtag is pretty fairly obvious. Okay? And it would be lovely if you could tweet. Now, Sarah and I are lucky. We're getting to travel all over the world. In the last 12 months, for example, we've been in India, Vietnam, Qatar, Denmark, Poland, Holland, Hungary. Most importantly, working with people like yourselves, but even more importantly, working with children. And the idea is that we are sharing lots of, almost too many, different ways to motivate, to engage, to inspire children. Hopefully, by the end of our time with people, they're going, that's enough. <laughs> but we're dragged away going, there's more. And most of it is just good fun, uh, is to make an impact in our classrooms. And what we aim is to get people to take, even if it's just a single solitary thing, out of our travel bag and my slightly wandering mind. And we are now working with, well, foundation, well, from the little snotty ones to the top of the big spotty ones in lots of different ways to help them move forward. But as you know, the majority of the children we teach, that's the only century they've experienced. And sometimes they are way ahead of us, <laughs> aren't they? They have tools and <laughs> tricks and toys and enthusiasms. And it's another I word that I think we need to help to build. And whether it's analog or digital, well, technology has been around since the dawn of time, hasn't it? And everybody loves trying new things. So I think we should start right back at the beginning with an analog object. You know, what's the story behind that? Or what could be within the box? And when we're working with students, I introduce them to my friend Mr. Walker, who hasn't traveled with us today, because Mr. Walker is my other walking stick. And he's full of holes. And I get the children, students, whatever age, to work out why he's full of holes. Um, you have your own portable shower, Mr. Rylands, or lots of other things. So we start with a still object. And then maybe going to a picture. Maybe a picture of something we can't experience. And the whole aim of this is to get children talking. Now, I'm going to show you the next step. And you are going to go home and show somebody this. Have a look at taggalaxy.de. It's a German website. But for those of you who don't speak German, don't panic. It's in any language. Watch. With Tag Galaxy, this is not designed to be used in education. I'm typing in the word Africa. Now watch. It makes me a beautiful solar system related to my original word. But now I can combine Africa and Safari. There is the basis of a non-linear discussion. But now what? I click on the planet at the center, and it populates that place with pictures. Oh, you're going to go home and go, darling, you've got to see this. If you haven't got a darling, go down the bar and find one, because you're going to need to show somebody that. The aim, really, is to find images in different ways. But I think before we even get to this level, that non-linear, almost debate. But now we're here. What do your feet feel like on that track? The next step for me, beyond object and still image, are panoramas. There are many different gorgeous panoramas to widen their level of interest. How about making your own panoramas? You're going to like this. Can I nick one of those bottles of water, please? 
You're going to like this if you're one of those people who goes on holiday, takes photographs, and then goes home and does nothing with them. Watch. Claire Ver, VR, virtual reality. Take your pictures, throw it into Clever, and it makes you a gorgeous panorama. Cheers. Oh, come on. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. That's nice. Excellent. Salud. I like that. Yes. Excellent. So, object, still image, panoramas. How about moving panoramas? And watch, with panoramas.dk, and you're writing all these down. I'll tell you what, we'll send you these links if you get in touch with us. We'll just send you the links to them, so don't panic. Watch, with panoramas.dk, you can stand still. Look at those curtains of ice. Icing sugar-covered, but watch, with your mouse... You can then, but ages later, look around. So be the nutter who's hanging off that rock. Be the nutter who's belaying him down there. But then, watch, be the complete and utter nutter who's hanging off that rock there taking a full 360 degree virtual reality for us to use in empathy or poetry or if we're doing history or geography we could sit princess diana like at the taj mahal or the blue mosque how about making your own moving panoramas so that when you come back to school with whatever age student you can discuss where you've been, maybe. And with Clever, as well as making you a static panorama for free, and everything I'm showing you today is free. <gasps> That's quite nice, isn't it? But watch, with Clever, it also makes you a gorgeous, fully navigable, navigatable, virtual panorama, as it were. So here, one place that we have been to, maybe where you've been. So you could make one of these today about Madrid and take it back to your colleagues even. And the aim of all of these things is to get children talking. I'm sure many of you, whichever country, have come across the concept of talk for writing. How about talk in to writing? And there are quite a few ways you can do that. Here is one of my favorites, which is available in lots of different languages. Talk Typer. It's a Google Chrome extension, but you can do it. Look, English, French, Latin, Polish, Portuguese. You talk into your laptop, and for free, it turns that into text. Now, there are many languages around today, 70 countries represented here today, and I discovered a fantastic, it's an Italian site called Logos, which translates a single word into multiple translations for you. So I was looking up three words that I'm going to use with you in a moment. We're going to play doctors and nurses. Okay. Not maybe that kind, but look, I just put into Logos, I put doctor, midwife, you know, the lady who looks after the little babies. And then I thought I would throw another one in, a pickpocket. Could you please turn to the people next to you and ask them what pickpocket means or tell them what it means and make sure they don't take anything out of your... Tell them what the word pickpocket is in your language. Go for it. Thief. Pickpocket. Okay, here we go. Here's the next step then. Watch. Turning. Keep with me now, children. Keep with me. Turning text into speech. I started late and it was partly my fault that we started late. I'm sorry. But watch this. With Hello Slide, you get your children, you're too excited, you lot, you get your children to make, or students, whatever language, whatever ability, to make a PowerPoint slide about what they're interested in, and then save it as a PDF, throw it 
into Hello Slide, and it makes you a presentation that gets read out. And I think the festival of light quite when a Hindus have a big word. celebration and lights little lights called Diva lights. I think you'll e see why I wanted to play you E. Elephants will give people a lift. If you give an elephant some money, it will give you a blessing on your head. Ooh. Okay, so that's turning text into speech. Here's another one. Ivona. Ivona is available in many languages, Hello including you Welsh. People. This is us trying out a special tool. It is very easy to get some quite convincing readings of your writings. And you can do it it's in fabulous. many languages. A thing. Okay, so let me take you back. Still object, artifact, picture, panoramas, moving panoramas, making your own moving panoramas. The next step for me has to be computer games. Games have been around since, well, the dawn of time, haven't they? Everybody loves playing games. Well, nearly everybody. There are some people who are born to go through life frowning and pointing, aren't there? But the whole concept of taking the positive sides of gaming, because games have a negative press. They're regarded as being, oh, no, you can't, oh, no, you can't. But I'm sure you, like me, have never seen levels of engagement such as this. I find it slightly strange that I am known as the games-based learning man. It's a one, one small part of what we do, and it would be a very shallow diet if that's all we did. But I have found it has had a massive impact on girls and, more importantly, boys wanting to write. I almost have to hold back the reputation as being the games man. But we spend a lot of time working with schools all around the world now on finding lots of different ways to get children writing and talking, whether it's digital or analogue. It's about giving them time to think, to be there. And getting children sharing, building ideas, talking with each other, and knowing what to do when they don't know what to do. And if it's okay with you... I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Because I'm going to use, in fact, it's not even an, a game. It's an app, and it's available free on iThings, like iPhones. Who's got an iPhone? By the way, how do you know when somebody's got an iPhone? Because they tell you. Time and time. I've got an iPhone, okay. But I'm going to use a free app. It's called Epic Citadel. So, I'm going to use it to tell you a story. Are you? Then I'll begin. Every day, he would enter the citadel, longing for crowds. Not for company, no. For crowds. For he longed to slip unnoticed yet noticing through the crowds, taking his time, and far more than that, for he was this town's greatest pickpocket. A handkerchief here, a diamond there, anything, well, almost anything, for one man, not only seemed to see him, but would almost tease him, taunt him, by taking out from the folds of his cloak a long gold chain, on the end of which hung a pocket watch that would tick a challenge to our friend. Take me. 
before he slipped it back into his cloak and headed down to the tents by the river to ply his craft. For he was this town's greatest hypnotist. Our friend was taking his time just here one day felt the softest whisper of a touch in his own back pocket. And reaching round at great speed, he held on to the slenderest, tenderest wrist he thought imaginable. And he said, I cannot turn round, for she is bound to be a disappointment. But he turned and ended up gazing into the most beautiful eyes he had ever seen. And he said, how can I have missed out on this creation? And then he realized he had met his match in more ways than one. For it turns out that she was this town's sec she was this town's greatest pocket. And now I'm not doing too badly, but it turns out that children can tell this story far more effectively than me. Green screening for free in a busy classroom. Gorgeous. Against a piece of green cloth. Great treasure for my collection. Lovely. Gets you right there, doesn't it? Like a bout of indigestion. But one day, the pickpocket met another pickpocket and they fell in love. They fell in love. And then they thought, what if we were to join as one? He didn't even have to ask for her hand in marriage or take it, for she gave it readily. And to the church they hurried. And then they thought, what if we were to join as one? And I'd be very careful doing this with younger children. Surely that child would have the ultimate combination of our skills. So come the day, nine months later, there they are, the four of them. The midwife, the doctor, and the two pickpockets. But come the moment the little child emerged to the planet. Shock and horror. The midwife screamed and ran from the room, shattering her lantern into silver tears upon the floor. Can somebody write that down? Because that's quite nice, isn't it? Silver tears upon the floor. And the doctor, his mouth, hung in horror for the little child, its future and theirs was clenched and tight against its chest. Oh, I thought you were going to give me an R ah, or an O then, ah. So, our couple, they have a bit of a dilemma. Would you like to meet the pickpocket, ladies and gentlemen? I'll try that again. It went better in rehearsals. Would you like to meet the pickpocket, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, well, give him a ripple, because here he is. Yeah. You see, 
You thought he was just a poor, unsuspecting delegate. But now, can you tell us? C come, in, come into the city here. How long have you been plying your craft within the city? I've been plying my craft for 50 years. 50 years? Yes, sir. Man and boy, man and boy. Yes. Looking good <laughs> on it, I have to say. <laughs> What's the most amazing thing you've ever managed to, to steal? And tell us about its magical properties. Oh, it has to be uh, an iPhone. <laughs> really? I, yes. got, I had one of those. <laughs> an iPhone, amazing. But tell us the magical thing about that iPhone. Poor soul. Tell us the magical thing. That iPhone did something special for you one day. What did it oh, do? Oh, it did. It swiped. Just like this. Yes. Amazing. Well, actually, I, I did it this way. Yes. Because yeah, um, I'm from the United States, so we do things this way. You do things that really? way. Really? Yeah. Excellent. Keep that to yourself, yeah. sir. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> would you like to meet his wife? Actually, would you like to meet your wife? I would love to you meet my wife. You would. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> give her a ripple because here she is. <laughs> ah, now we get to see how they greet each other <laughs> of a morning. And how, watch that cable there. It's perfectly safe as long as you don't kick it or lick it. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Oh, very formal. <laughs> Very formal. Ah, oh, <laughs> lovely, very lovely. Can you tell us about that wonderful day when you two first met? Okay, it was in a little space in the city that uh, he was taking something from a man, and I saw him, and I said, oh, that's for me. That's, That's my That's for mind. me. It's in your minds, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Now, I re thank you. I realize we have a slight problem. You don't speak pickpocket ease, and you don't speak strange people wondering what's going on ease. So are there any questions, please, for our couple? And I will act a bit like a translator. Any questions? Embarrassing silence. <laughs> and that's what we spend a lot of time working with schools on. The fact that, well, look, Bloom's revised taxonomy. We've discovered these amazing things. They're called thinking dice. Go to, these aren't free, but I think they're fantastic. Go to thinkingdice.com. And they're based on Bloom's revised taxonomy. We actually suggested he makes them furry and bases them on Bloom's revised taxidermy, but never mind. They are ways to get children talking, but it's also about the silence, because nobody's talking doesn't mean nothing is happening. But are there any questions, please, for our couple? Okay, I have a question. Oh, we do. Yes. Beg your pardon? Ah, you're being asked to describe to us how, how much this place has become part of your life. Can you hear what I'm doing? I'm acting like a translator. It's a bit like when a footballer gets asked a question. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? What does the interviewer not do? Repeat the question. They use different words, but they keep the same language. I have a fully qualified translator here. It's his first day at work, ladies and gentlemen, so be gentle with him, too. But our translator, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Uh, here we go. Okay, John. Uh, and you, can you get up here? It's a little challenge. So, I'll do the first one. The question was... Is it real? You're being asked, are you able to tell us how, how, how this has become part of your life? Now, you're going to have to listen, John. Oh, listen. Uh, that's a new one for me. <laughs> you're listening. Okay. Uh, how, the, how has this become a, an integral part of my life? Well, I, um, I walk through the alleys. I walk through the piazzas. I look for pockets to pick. And um, I love doing that every day of my life. 
John, can you tell us maybe through the magic wand what he's just said? So here we go, John. Uh, Take the microphone, John. He asserts that uh, he does things that need to be spoken of in lower, hard-to-hear tones because he wants you to come closer. Ah. And when you come closer, he may begin to talk to you a little bit and also slip into those lower tones and bring you even a little yet closer. He's also saying and that he enjoys traveling through the streets and uh, areas of the village doing what he can to take what he can. One more. Who's got one more question, please? A question. Can you shout it for me, please? Okay. What was that? Uh, I'll, I'll do that one for you, John, because I know it's a bit difficult. Has this marriage created any inspirations? Because that's what we're being about. You're being asked, are you able to tell us, has your um, ooh, partnership um, provided you with any new ideas on uh, your job? Ah, that'll do, won't it? And we need some speed here, because I started late and, yes. Shall I speak in my low tone? Yes. Yes, yes. Higher. Higher? I can't do that. No. <laughs> Slower. Slower? Okay. Well, she asks um, if our relationship has inspired us uh, in new ways uh, to maybe aspire us to, to new things, to uh, raise our game, raise the, the level of our work. And, and what is the answer? And the answer is yes. Uh, very simply, John, can you tell him what, she's, what he's just said? Yes. Positive. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, give these yes. three a ripple. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Now, those poor souls, thank you. All I went up to ask you was, are you up for a challenge and that's all they knew so i think they deserve another big ripple okay i use the translator idea in science let's say i get a scientist to come up and explain what she's just learned i'll get a translator to explain what the scientist said and i noticed a lot of new vocabulary but also all the children are trying as well to help the translator. So, do forgive me, I'm going to move on. It's not about an iPad app. It's more about getting children thinking, in this case, and we do many other things. But we've set this, <coughs> excuse me, as a challenge for schools. And schools all around the world have been sending us stories about how that couple might solve the little child's dilemma. Sometimes analog, sometimes digital. How many of you have come across Comic Life? On a Mac laptop, Comic Life, beautiful way to break down a story. It's also available on a PC. But here's two. Tilt Shift Maker and Psycho Paint. We got students, older ones, in Denmark to go out into the town around where they were, in this case Helsingor, look, and use Tilt Shift Maker to change the focus. Beautiful. Is this the town? That's certainly real. Is this the man? Is he still pickpocketing years later? And another one, Psycho Paint. I love the name. Psycho. Oh, Psycho Paint. You upload a photograph, and you use it to change, well, make your own painting, maybe. So is this the gateway to the man with the herbs and spices? Interesting ideas, but the whole business of this is not about the story. It's getting them to use, sorry, not about the pictures. It's what they're saying around it that is important. And out there in Helsingor, look, these children did it in my language. They told tales of the pickpocket and his wife and how they might solve the problem. 
Now, we need to build words and vocabulary. It's lovely to see that in the brochure there are lots of wordles. You know wordle? The more frequently you use a word, the larger it becomes. Here's another one, look. Tagzido. With tagzido, I'm going to go flicky-backy, look. With tagzido, it makes you a wordle-like experience. But you can put it into an image. But then, watch, oh, hover over any word, and it brings those words alive. Now that, again, could be done in any language. Here's one that can be done in any language. Zoo burst. With zoo burst, you can make your own free 3D pop-up books. This could be at a university level to explain a scientific principle, maybe. A vast amount of things. If you want to find out more about the iPad, side of things, flick forward and have a look at our website, because we've shown you a few ways you can use it. All of these things are about getting children who wouldn't know what to write. You know, the I don't know what to write is our biggest challenge. So I'm going to come near to the end here with this one. Inkle Writer is a way for free for children or students to make interactive, non-linear books. It could be a thesis with a decision. It's a bit like when you were a student, I'm sure you had. If you want to kill the dragon, turn to page 68, and so on. And Inkle Writer means you can do a lot of these things for free. Now, I know that we today are looking at the future. We don't know, do we? We have to be creative. We have to think imaginatively. Whether we are going to flip our classroom or bring our own devices, we have to think about the students we're working with. For example, sure, some of you have heard of SAGE, Scalable Adaptive Graphics Environment. But watch, those teachers, despite the technology, still are facing away from a group of slightly bored-looking children. Let's hope that we do not have our back to their future. We have to remember that it's not about the tools, it's about what is said rather than what is used to say it. And there are so many pressures on teachers and lecturers these days that it can have a negative impact on our health, let alone on standards within our classrooms. But I can assure you we have found that creativity can and does have a massive impact on standards, on children's, students' confidence and creativity. If you get nothing else today, by the way, out of this lecture, get this. This is my lunch box. It's an old CDR case, and the spindle stops the filling falling out from the middle of the bagel. <coughs> okay, maybe I should get out more often. But I'm going to tell you this, folks. We have seen the impact that these things have. People can worry that they won't know how to do it. If you don't, be honest, there will be students who do. If you do, pretend you don't, because that's when some of the best learning takes place. Now, folks, I've been going at speed. I've mentioned our website. If you go to timrylands.com, T-I-M-R-Y-L-A-N-D-S. You will see hundreds of photographs of students of many ages and abilities. But the joyous thing about blogging is the speed that it can be changed. I think blogs are a fantastic way to make the walls 
of your school transparent. Because here in the Hotel Melia Castilla, or however it is said, folks, Sarah has been working like mad because I wish this internet was faster. Come on! Because, ladies and gentlemen, you, well, let's see. Every day we put up a link to something free. Go and have a look. And, come on, come on, internet. I'm, oh, gosh, I'm passionate about finishing on time. But, folks, if you, oh, no, if you go to timrylands.com, you are already on it. Okay, sadly, that's not loading, which is a real shame because it's absolutely stunning. Some gorgeous pictures. Folks, I am Tim Rylands on Twitter. Please get in touch. Use the hashtag if you're going to write about this conference. Let's get it trending. I've gone over. Do I have enough time, 30 seconds, to tell you the end of the story? Well, time. They then, it had been running out. But then they remembered the man with the watch. And they thought if we could get that watch, we could sell it on eBay or FBay or GBay or any of the bays to make enough money to carry on our travels. So they headed back into the citadel. And they sought him here. They sought him there. And at last they found him in the pub. And he said, stop. Taking my watch will be a short-term solution to, my prop to your problems. Let me try my skills. So they went with him down to his tent by the river. And he got out his watch and held it in front of the little child's eyes. And instead of closing... They opened and fixed upon the watch. And so did his hand. And there, inside, was the midwife's gold wedding ring. <laughs> ah, sometimes children are way ahead of us, aren't they? Thank you. Hey, thank you.